Hi everyone and welcome to Book Boop. My name is Rachel and today I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in the month of February. I got through six books of all sorts of different genres and age ranges and I'm excited to talk about them. So I'm going to use my notes like I normally do. So if I'm looking at, kind of off screen to look at a book, I've got my trusty little bullet journal here. Um, just to make sure I stay on track and I keep things concise. So I'm going to give you all my non-spoilery thoughts, but try to keep this pretty quick, especially since I have six books to talk about. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the very first book that I read in February was The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. This is one I was wanting to read for a while and it's a relatively new book. And if you've never heard about it before, a very basic synopsis is about this family that lives in this small village near this mountain where I think the Fae used to live, but they no longer reside there. But in this little village, this family, they take care of the village's cemetery and their job is to to dig graves. And that's all, the main, main protagonist we follow, her family business, that's all she cares about is digging graves and taking care of her family until one day they start having an issue where the dead don't seem to want to say dead, which sounds as creepy as it is. It's awesome. And I got to tell you, oh my goodness, I need to purchase this book ASAP. I do not own it. I read it on my Kindle and I would love to be able to show it to you because it's got a beautiful cover, but my goodness, I need this book because I freaking loved it. I can guarantee you this will end up being on my top books of 2020. It was five out of five stars for me. It was so good. Here's some reasons why. So I adored every single character and I thought the patterns and personality felt real. I, there was literally not a single character in this book that I disliked. All of the, the thought processes, the dialogue, all of it, it felt very authentic. It didn't feel blown out of proportion, which is really, really great to see in a YA book. So this book is, is for young adults. And a lot of times they're very dramatic. There's a lot of angst. I didn't feel that in this book, which made me so happy because I'm not a huge fan of really angsty stuff. And I love that the character seemed super realistic. I loved the fact that it was a slow burn romance. There is a romance in this. It's not the main focus of the book, but it was a slow burn, which I really love and you don't see very often. It was not an instant romance thing. And the slow burn romance made so much sense because it seemed realistic. <laughs> it seemed like a legit actual, this is how this would happen. This is how this would develop. So I really, really enjoyed that a lot. Again, I was just so excited to see a realistic slow burn romance, no angst. Thank goodness, refreshing in YA. That was so nice. I thought it was perfectly placed, paced, sorry, perfectly paced and not plotting or too busy. I thought the story was just paced so wonderfully. There was plenty of action, but not too much. There was some more slower parts, but not too slow. Like it just felt perfectly paced. And I always felt moved along like, okay, what's going to happen next? Let's see what's happening next. Ooh, this is cool. Okay, now I'm on the next thing. Like it just, it was so wonderfully paced. And I loved that. I loved our great, strong female lead. She was totally BA. She could take care of herself and she wanted to take care of her family. And she's just, she is a very headstrong character, but not in an annoying way. Cause sometimes they can be really annoying or just angsty or just too like grouchy. <laughs> and she wasn't like that. Like she was really tomboyish, but she was, I don't know, I just loved her character. She was just a very strong character, a very strong female character with great representation. I thought it was fantastic. So I loved her character. Also, the other main character we follow, he suffers from chronic pain. And I personally felt that felt like that was great representation. Now, I don't necessarily personally live from chronic pain. I live with um, anxiety and a little bit of depression, and that's a daily struggle. But this, we let, we followed a character that had serious chronic pain, and I thought it was very, very well, I, I just thought it was very well represented. I felt like it was very realistic. I just felt like it was well done. And I loved seeing that because that was something I hadn't seen before. And especially in YA, but just in general, I hadn't seen that kind of representation. So I really, really appreciated it. And I enjoyed seeing that representation in a book. Um, it had a very engaging storyline that kept me at the edge of my seat. It has a great mix of scary and quest advent adventuring. So I love me a good quest adventuring type book. The type of book is like, okay, we need to get this done. Here's the things we need to do to do it. Let's pack up our stuff. Let's go. Let's let's get this quest. 
And I, I personally really love that. I love that trope. Sorry, my throat just did something weird. I love that trope. And I love the fact that it, there was a lot of creepiness because I love scary books. <laughs> so I loved the scariness of these living dead and the quest adventuring of trying to figure out why is this happening? Why are the dead coming back to life? What is the reasoning behind this? How can we stop it? Like just all that kind of stuff. It was just really, really fun and creepy and engaging. And I loved it so much. I literally loved everything in the storytelling. It's, it's so good. It was so good. So five out of five, so amazing. I want to read it again at some point and I definitely want to add it to my lovely bookshelves because ah, it was so good. So worth it. Please read it. It's so awesome. Okay. I blathered on too long about that one. The next one, let's talk about the next book. So this one I borrowed from the library. I don't have it anymore. And it is Small Spaces by Katherine Arden. This is a middle grade, I would say middle grade paranormal book. So in this story, we're following this girl who is going on a field trip with her class from, I think, elementary or middle school, and they're going to this farm. And she's heard some kind of like ghost story related type things about this farm before and they all travel there on the bus and some creepy things happen while they're there and one of the creepy things that's heavily involved are scarecrows very murderous creepy scarecrows <laughs> Um, I know that's sort of like a very abstract kind of description. I don't really know how to describe this book other than that it's creepy. It takes place on a creepy farm with scarecrows everywhere that come alive at night and try to murder you <laughs> and turn you into a scarecrow. It's really, really creepy, legit, and I really enjoyed it a lot. This book has been around for a little while now, and um, I've heard a lot about it on BookTube, and I was excited to finally get into it. It's a really, really short book. It's just a little over 200 pages, sorry. It's just so, so, so a really, really quick read, and was so much fun. Um, I will say that it was a slow and rather confusing start to the book, and there was a lot of emphasis on how quirky the main character was, which got a little bit annoying. It was like, just kind of over revealing her quirky thought pattern and you know how she looked at a vehicle and thought oh that looks like this something dragon or i don't know it was just like they were trying to emphasize a little bit too much on her quirkiness which was got a little annoying but thankfully that was just the beginning of the book um and it kind of picked up after that point um the main farm storyline was creepy and interesting it was a mystery to it and i loved the mystery i loved the super creepiness the scarecrows terrifying oh my goodness um the possessed scarecrows are honestly pretty scary and reminds me of scary stories movie so the movie scary stories how to tell scary stories in the dark or scary stories to tell in the dark anyways that movie that came out last year um there's a portion in that movie where there are scarecrows and there's a scarecrow that kind of comes alive and that's what it made me think of so i had a great visual <laughs> If I was reading Small Spaces to really creep me out. So if you haven't seen that movie, I recommend it. It's pretty creepy. It's it's based on um, a children's book of scary stories. And when you put that on screen, it's actually freaking terrifying. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is so creepy. I need to rewatch that movie. That's a good one. Anyway, so it made me think of that movie. Um... I love it when a middle grade has a good creep factor and I'm hoping to read this with my daughter around Halloween one day. So my daughter's three. She's a little young for this, but I'm hoping one day we can sit down and read some like old goosebumps and books like this, like small spaces and things. Just creepy, fun, short stories that are just Mm, get you all in the creeps and I love it. <laughs> I gave this four stars out of five. So very worth the read. If you like scary, spooky stories, just something short, something to kind of sit by the fire and read something kind of all in one sitting or in just in a couple days, I highly recommend it. It was really good. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So this one, Love and Luck by Jenna Evans Welch. Just to go ahead and let you know, I do not normally read contemporary. This is a YA contemporary book. I don't read contemporary. It's not really my thing. I'm trying to delve into some different genres though and give them a chance. So this one, the reason I was interested in this one to start with is because it is a contemporary, got a little bit of romance to it, but mainly it's about this teenage girl who's traveling in Ireland and she's just seeing the sights. And Ireland's one of the places I would love to go and visit one day. So that interested me as it were. And then it's just about her getting over heartbreak as she travels through Ireland. 
So I was like, okay, that could be cute. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Um, I enjoyed the sightseeing of Ireland in this. I loved all the different places that they went to and the descriptions. It was very atmospheric in that way. And that part was really cool. Um, the characters, they felt like caricatures to me. They were blown out of proportion. What I mean by that is it was, yes, it was angsty, but also the characters, I just felt like they overreacted constantly. <laughs> like if a character was upset about something, they weren't just a little upset, they were overblown upset. If they were angry about something, they were overblown angry. If they were sad, they were overblown sad. Like it was just like really strong emotions all the time. Nothing was subtle. <laughs> and that that was a little much for me. And it made the characters feel very un unrealistic. It just felt very like a caricature, honestly. Just all the characters felt like that. Just very overblown. Um, it was a bit too much drama and high school angst for my taste. I'm just not an angst person. Some people love, live for that. Some people love to read books that have angst in it and more power to you. It's not my thing. So there was just a lot too much angst for me in this one. Um, I'd say it's not bad, but it sits too far from the target audience and out of my interest. So this is written, I think if I was younger, I maybe have enjoyed this more. I just think it's written too far from the target audience, which I know I am. This is written for young adults. I'm 31 years old. <laughs> so I know I'm far from the target audience. I get that. Um, so I just, I think I was a little too far removed from the main target audience and it's just not my thing. So I gave this three out of five. That's just sort of middle of the road for me. That means I didn't hate it, but I didn't like love it either. It was just kind of like, eh, it's kind of enjoyable, but it's forgettable for me. So this one I didn't particularly love. I do recommend it though, if you love contemporaries um, and specifically ones that are kind of traveling where you travel and just get to see places or read about places and see them in your mind, then I recommend. So it wasn't one of my favorites, but it was still good. All right, let's move on. A few more to go. This next one I read, I borrowed from the library and I don't have it anymore, but it is The King of Crows by Libba Bray. It is the fourth and final book in the Diviner series. If you've never heard about the Diviner series before, it is a paranormal series. It takes place in America, New York, 1920. So if you love that 1920s flapper era, this is for you. And if you like paranormal, this is for you too. We follow these, I would say young adults, probably kind of in their late teens, early twenties, and they are considered diviners. They all have some kind of power. Um, one of the characters can heal, another one can read objects, like they can pick up an object and get flashes of the history of the object or who's owned it or things that happened when that object was in that person's possession. Um, there's people that can see visions of the future that kind of stuff. Um, the first book is like a murder mystery type thing, but then eventually it opens up into this big overarching plot that goes throughout the entire series. Um, it's really, really creepy. It's really dark. Um, definitely very strongly in that 1920s flapper feel. Lots of 1920s slang, which is really, really fun. So it really pulls you into um, that world and that time period. And on top of that, Libra Bray is really great about creating very atmospheric feelings, lots of atmospheric writing in the book. So really good. This was the last book in the series. It was a chunker and I was really excited to see how this series ended. So actually, honestly, I don't have that many thoughts or feelings about this one. Perfectly honest also too, because it's the last book. I don't want, since it's not the first one, I don't want to say anything that would be spoilery. Um, I will say I enjoyed the creepy paranormal aspect as I always have in all of these books. I enjoyed the growth of the characters throughout the series and the friendships throughout the series. I love seeing how their friendships were so tight knit together and how these people ended up you know, first meeting and then kind of becoming friends and then really becoming honestly a family. I love seeing that kind of dimension and that character development. And I loved seeing people that maybe started out honestly as kids in the beginning of the series, just kind of being all about themselves and only like caring about themselves and um, just kind of getting to a point where they're just more developed and more grown up by the end. And it's just really cool to see that development. Um, I felt like the book could have been shorter. Some parts felt too meandering. I felt like this book was just too long. Um, some things could have been shortened up. Some of the plot points could have been shortened up or even removed. It just felt like it went on too long. And there were just, like I said, there were just some parts that felt a little meandering. Like, okay, can we move on to, you know, let's move this plot along. Cause there was this big, huge thing we're moving towards and you just want it, you want to get there, but it felt like it took too long to get there. So 
Um, overall, it's a very fun series with lots of great paranormal hits in a roaring 20s setting. I gave this a three and a half out of five, which is a little low for me. I put, put it through the caw pile system, if you've ever heard about that before. Um, if you haven't, it's something that G from Book Roast, I don't know if she created it, um, but she created like a spreadsheet that I've been using. And it just helps you decide on what star value you should give a book, especially if you're struggling with how you want to rate a book, um, which this one I was having trouble with because I enjoyed it and I enjoyed the series as a whole, but this was probably honestly my least favorite out of the series. Um, but it was nice to see it end, just to see it wrapped up and have some sort of like finishing to it. That was nice. Anyway, so three and a half to five, very worth the series though. If you like creepy paranormal, do it. It is so good. Okay, let's move on to the next book. I've got two more left, peeps. So... Yep, two more left. We got this. So the next one I read was Dead Voices by Catherine Arden. This is actually the second book that comes after Small Spaces. Now, this book takes place in a setting where they win a trip to go skiing at the ski lodge that hasn't officially opened yet. And they go to the ski lodge, they end up getting snowed in and stuck there. And then some creepy ghosty things start happening. So that's the basis of, of that one. And I was excited to jump back into the world that Catherine Arden had created in Small Spaces and that creepiness. So we had dead voices. Um, one thing that I kept hearing repeated a lot on BookTube, um, a lot of people read dead voices, especially around October and the fall time in 2019. And a lot of people were saying that this is a standalone, um, which you could. You could read this as a standalone and I think you would be fine, but I will say that I feel like it gives so much more perspective if you read the first book because there are references from the first book and things that happen. Basically, you've got the main villain in the first book and there's some references to that villain and I feel like it, I don't know, I feel like it would be a little bit confusing if you didn't read the first one. So it's my personal recommendation to read Small Spaces, then read Dead Voices instead of just choosing one of them and reading them first, or at least reading Dead Voices first. That's my recommendation. So um, I will say that it'd be a lot more fun that way. I love the Snowden atmosphere. I thought that was top notch. I loved the whole thing of being trapped in this place that ends up becoming dangerous and they can't get out and they're stuck there and there's they're really far from civilization and it's just it was nice and I liked reading it in the winter time like I did because it just sort of had that creepy this would be a great book to read if it's if you're snowed in like it's a snow day and you're stuck inside this would be a really good one because it's that atmosphere and I loved that. I loved how there was a slight shift in character focus and we got to see character development. So something I did enjoy is that we had the main kid in small spaces and then we had a couple other side characters that kind of ended up going along with the main plot. And those characters ended up being in the second one as well. But the shift focused to where a lot of the time we ended up following one of the other characters a little bit more. The other characters were still there. But I liked that. I liked that shift in the character focus. And we're not always focusing on that one specific character all the time. So I did really enjoy that and a little bit of shift in perspective. Um, I love it when characters who wouldn't normally be friends are bonded together through shared experience. So in the first book, they all go through this terrifying thing, this terrifying ordeal. And because of that, these, especially these three kids who normally probably wouldn't be friends, they probably wouldn't be, they just don't have anything, enough things in common, end up becoming really, really good friends. And I love seeing that. I love seeing a shared experience in this case, a shared experience of terror, but a shared experience that brings them together into a friendship that normally wouldn't have happened ends up being really special. So I really like that as well. Definitely a fun and spooky read. And I enjoyed, again, the quest aspect of the story. This one had a little bit of quest stuff to it, which I really enjoy too, because I, I love that, just like in Bone Houses. So that was a really fun book. I gave it four out of five stars as well, just like Small Spaces. Both really fun, both fun, short, creepy reads. This one was about 250 pages, so slightly longer than Small Spaces, but it was fun. It was really good, fun reads, fantastic to read if you just want a short, creepy story. All right, let's move on to this last book. I am a little bit nervous about talking about this one because it is so popular. I was really excited to read it and I have some conflicting feelings about it. So let's just go ahead and jump in, shall we? 
Let's talk about The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. If you have not heard of this book before, where have you been? <laughs> this thing is everywhere. Everybody has read it, I feel like. And I was really behind on getting to this because this is not my thing. This is, an, I would say, an adult contemporary book. I don't read very much adult, and I also don't really read contemporary. But I heard so much about this book, and everybody loves it. It was, like, everybody's favorite book of like 2018 or 2019. I don't know. A lot of people really, really love this book. And this is one of a lot of people's favorite books ever. And I was like, you know what? I want to understand the hype. If you haven't heard of this before and you don't know what it's about, it is a fictional story about this Hollywood starlet from the golden age of Hollywood. So think Marilyn Monroe, but her name is Evelyn Hugo. And she was a starlet in the 50s, 60s, and 70s in Hollywood. And it's all about her. It's about her life story. And just honestly, the main focus also, um, something that people have always been interested in, because she's never given really much of an in-depth interview before. And she ends up picking some seemingly very random journalist who is a nothing person, basically, and says, I want you to write my life story. And which is crazy. And the whole thing with her is that Throughout her lifetime, Evelyn Hugo has had seven husbands. <laughs> That's a lot of husbands. <laughs> and she hasn't really delved very much at any point into her husband's lives or the life, sh life she had with all the different husbands and maybe who she loved the most, if out of any of them, or just stories about her life. So that's what this is about. Let's go ahead and jump into my thoughts. Um, one of the most, I will say this is one of the most well-written and attention-grabbing stories I've ever read. It is extremely well written. It will grab you and not let go. I constantly wanted to keep turning the page and learning more about Evelyn Hugo. She was such a fascinating character because she is riddled with flaws and she knows it. She is a backstabbing, think for yourselfer. <laughs> All she cares about really is herself and what she wants. She wanted to be the next big thing. She wanted to be a movie star. She wanted to be infamous and she will do anything to get there. And she knows she's a terrible person. She keeps reiterating that book. Like, I want you to understand, like, I know the things I've done have been bad. I know it. And honestly, I would do it again. And that's, it's, it's so hard to look away from that because that's so different for me. I'm not, the, I'm always thinking about what other people think of me all the time. And the fact, like, you know, I want to be kind and I want to, I think about other people and I've never been, like, this is such a selfish person, just like overly selfish. I would like to think most people aren't this crazy selfish as Emily Hugo is. So it's, she's just so far removed from me and just people that I know that it was so fascinating to read about her. Um, everything is paced so well and you just want to keep reading her life is so fascinating. It is crazy drama. Um, just learning about all her different husbands and just all the different things that she went through to get to the life that she ends up having. Um, it's just, it's insane. And it's, you just want to keep reading. I don't want to say it's like a train wreck and you don't want to look away because it's not a train wreck. It's just written so well. You're just like, I can't look away. And her life is kind of a train wreck in the fact of the things that keep happening to her and the things she chooses to do with her life. You're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> and you're just like, what does she do next? I want to know. Um, the characters all felt well developed and intricate and raw. All these characters felt very real. Um, they were all terrible people, <laughs> mostly. Almost everybody in this book was just terrible, but like in a good way to where it's like they know they're terrible or they have an end goal in mind that they're really focused on. It just felt very raw and real to me. It didn't feel fake. And I think that's why it's so fun to read this because by the time, not only just when you finish this book, just you feel like this person's real. Like you feel like Evan Lee Hugo's real and these other people you read about in here are real. And part of you wants to look up some of the movies that she's in that are mentioned. You're just like, oh, I want to watch Evelyn Hugo. And you realize, oh, yeah, she's not a real character. <laughs> like, it feels so realistic. It's legit. Um, I will say, okay, so let's move on to some other things here. I will say that my main struggle was the amount of sexual related content, not something I'm comfortable with or is for me. Um, again, this is adult contemporary. So 
it gets relatively graphic and it had a little bit too much focus on just sexualization and and just smut itself not like there weren't like really long descriptive scenes but it was a big heavy focus of this story because think like think like sex love and, and and rock and roll you know what I mean or sex drug and drugs and rock and roll think that kind of thing so it's just like that kind of rock star kind of life so it just it, it was very prevalent in Evelyn's life and it was a little heavy for me personally it's just that's not something I'm used to reading and it's not really my thing it's not something I, I, I like to read and I, I didn't really enjoy the aspect of it it wasn't enough to turn me off but it's there's a decent amount in here so I will let you know that um, it contains prominent LGB representation, um, quite prominent, um, and also just want to let you know there's trigger warnings for abuse, both verbal and physical, because some of Evelyn's husbands weren't really the greatest guys, so um, we'll let you know that as well. So there are some trigger warnings, but all in all, this one I struggled so hard writing because... It was so outside of my comfort zone, but it was so good at the same time. I gave it, I gave it four out of five. Um, I put it through the call pile rating system to help me out to figure out what to rate it. So I gave it four out of five. I knew it wasn't a five star for me just because there were certain parts of it that weren't in my comfort level um, to where it bothered me enough. So I knew it wasn't gonna be a five star, but I knew it was higher than like a three. Anyways, so four stars, I would say is well worth reading <laughs> if this sounds like your kind of thing. Um, it's, it is, it's just very well written. I'm blown away by Taylor Jenkins' read writing style and I'm really looking forward to trying some more. I really want to read Daisy Jones and the Six. Um, after I've read this, I'm like, I really want to just read more of her work because she's so good. Oh my goodness. Like it sucks you in. Okay. Whoo, that was a lot. <laughs> So those are all the books I read in February. I tried to be snappy with it. So if you've hung around this long, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. What are some books that you read in February? Did you have a good reading month? Have you read any of these books that I mentioned today? Did you have some differing opinions? Let me know. I would love to talk to you about it. Also, thank you and welcome to um, my new influx of subscribers. I've had some newer subscribers lately. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for being here. On this side of the screen over here is my logo. If you click on that, you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and join me on my reading journey. On this side over here is another video if you want to watch another one right now. But thank you so much for watching. You rock and don't forget to keep reading. Bye.